Okay, so in this presentation, we're going to have a look at how we create Ethereum and Bitcoin addresses. Uh, both of these methods use elliptic curve methods. So we'll have a look at how Python can be used to create both Ethereum and Bitcoin addresses. Okay, so let's look at a basic transaction as we would see it with a cryptocurrency. So first we'll start with uh, Bob. So this is Bob here. And over here we have Alice. So Bob wants to send some cryptocurrency to Alice. So what we have is a private key and a public key. So in the methods we're going to look at, the private key is a completely random uh, value. And then that is used to derive the public key. And again, Alice has a private key and a public key. So what happens is that when Bob wants to send Alice some cryptocurrency, he will get Alice's public ID. So that is derived from our public key. So that will become the two. And then the from will be his uh, public address. That becomes a transaction along with the uh, the amount of cryptocurrency that we want to transact. Then what we do is we take a Bob's private key and then we sign, we create a digital signature for the transaction, which proves that he has actually signed the transaction. And the smart thing about this transaction, it uses elliptic curve DSA, is that everyone can check that he has actually signed it without actually requiring his public key. Okay, so there we have the basic method uh, here. So we can see the signed private key. Uh, this is public address here is used and then it is uh, Bob's private key which is used to sign the transaction. Okay, so first we'll have a look at some basics of elliptic curve cryptography. So elliptic curve cryptography uses an equation such as this. And AX plus B and we have an A value and a B value. That creates a curve such as this. And the smart thing with this curve is that if we plot a point, let's call it G, and then we keep adding the point, we will always get another point on the elliptic curve. Let's call that P. So if we add the uh, the G point, so this is remember a G of X and Y, and this is also X and Y. If we add our G point N times, we will end up with a point P. So P is equal to G plus G, so on, N times. And we would typically define that as N is equal to N times G. P is the public key, G is the generator point, and N is the private key. So it's this N that we keep uh, secure and shouldn't be released. This is what's called a scalar value because it's a multiplier. This is a point value because it's an X and a Y point. And the same with this one here. So this is the way that elliptic curve uh, methods actually uh, work and we typically use them to be able to sign for the transaction. Okay, so let's have a look at how we create an Ethereum uh, address.
Okay, so with this, um, we'll start off with uh, Bob here. Bob creates a random private key. And that's 256 bits. And there are two to the power of 256 different keys. There's a massive key space. So it won't be possible for anyone to ever guess uh, Bob's private key. Then we put it through what's called the elliptic curve, DSA method, to create a public key point. So this produces an XY point, which will be our public key. So we'll define that as P. And this will be 512 bits long because we have 256 bits for each of the point values. Then we put it through uh, Kakak two five six, otherwise known as Sha three. This then produces a two hundred and fifty six bit hash. But what we do is that we trim it down so that we only take the lower one hundred and sixty bits of the hash and this becomes the public address so when someone wants to send you some ethereum then you will use this 160 bit address to send it uh, to them we use our private key to be able to sign for the transactions and we use our public address to be able to identify us And so here's what a Bitcoin transaction looks like. We see that we have an address here. This is our public address. And then over here, we have the recipients of these transactions uh, here. Ethereum uh, looks slightly different. We have hexadecimal addresses uh, here and not the base 58 as we'll see but we have a to and a from and we have a value and then overall we have a, a signature uh, for the transaction so our ethereum as we saw looks like this 256 bits for our private key that goes through this standard uh, elliptic curve DSA uh, method and this is the elliptic curve that's actually used that then produces a public key here which is two 32-bit uh, integers and it gives us 512 bits here that then goes through our hashing method and we only take the first 60 160 bits to produce our address. And this is the code that we can implement it with. So there's the random value that we're creating for our private key. We then put it into uh, this to be able to uh, determine our public key. This gives us our keys here and then uh, to be able to go through the hashing function here and in the end we just want the lower 160 bits or uh, 40 hex characters so sample run looks like this so there's our random number that we've created there's our public key which is an xy point and there is our address. So hopefully we should be able to have a look to see what that looks like. We'll generate another one. Okay, so we're just using this Python code here to create our private key, that creates a public key, and then we get our address. Bitcoins are 
Bitcoin addresses are slightly more complex and a little bit convoluted. So again, we start off with our private key, which is our 256 bits key here. We then use base 58. So base 58 is a little bit like base 64, but it loses some of the characters. And this gives us our with uh, pri uh, private key, which can be stored in our wallet. Again, we go through our elliptic curve DSA here with the same elliptic curve method as we saw before. And we're going to end up with a 512 bit public key. Okay, remember that's an X, Y point on the elliptic curve. After that, we go through two hashing methods, SHA-256, and then this uh, RIP AMD-160, and that produces our public key address. We convert that into base, uh, 58 and then that will come up with our Bitcoin address as an output there Okay, so that's the basic method but more complicated than our Ethereum uh, But remember this was created uh, At least a decade ago, so not quite as up-to-date as Ethereum Okay, and here is it in operation. Here's our private key. We convert it to base 58, which gets rid of some of the characters uh, that uh, have, we can have difficulty with. We then go through our elliptic curve DSA to produce our public key. And there's actually a little prefix at the start there, so it's not exactly 512 bits. This part here tells us if we have a compressed point or uncompressed point. We put it through two hashing methods to produce the public key hash. And then we go into base 58 and there we go. The telltale sign of a Bitcoin address is a one or a three at the start and uh, there. Okay, so that's how we do our Bitcoin addresses. Let's see if we can uh, look at the code to get this. So here we go. We'll generate one here and we create a private key there's a public key there's a with private key and then there is the address there's the telltale sign of a one at the start okay so the code that we have is here uh, to to do this The other method that we can have is what's called a Schnorr, Schnorr signature. And in Bitcoin, we can have uh, multiple senders going to one or more receiver. And the problem that we have is that each of these has a public key that needs to be checked or the signature. So as we increase the number of uh, senders or, or entities involved in, the, in creating the transaction, then it will increase the processing time on the blockchain. So the SNOR method is a way that we can take uh, Bob, Alice and Carol's uh, public key and then merge them into a single signing key. And the signing key can then be used to sign uh, or prove the, uh, the transaction. So in this way, we don't have to check for all the keys. We only have to check for this signing key. So this is called multi-sig and it was a considerable advancement in Bitcoin technology as it allows us to be able to merge our public keys 
uh, together and still validate the transaction. So that's what it looks like there. We can see uh, we have our original uh, private keys. And then we gather together the public keys, aggregate them together uh, with a simple operation and we produce a single public key for uh, this, this signing process. Uh, anyone looking at a transaction can prove that each of these signers were involved with the signing process. Okay, so that's been a look at uh, some Ethereum and Bitcoin address generation.